And the crime of aggression is not a crime just against Ukraine. It's a crime against the whole of humanity. I wanted to give my blood, sweat and tears and contribute to the fight here. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro-Atlantic Course. My name is Alexandra Tsikhanovska, and today I would like to remind that Russian aggression against Ukraine has horrified the democratic world. And along with this horror, many people experienced a desire to help Ukraine and its people against the aggressor. From governmental efforts to supply weapons to welcoming Ukrainian refugees, there is a global effort of support. Some people, however, had an opportunity and a desire to go further and to actually pick up arms and join the battlefield directly to help Ukraine protect its freedom. Who are they? What drives these people? And what kind of work do they do here? If you want to know more, please subscribe to our channel to stay tuned. We are talking, of course, about what is known as the Foreign Legion. Foreign Legion was formed uh, on February 27th, just several days after the start of the large-scale invasion of Ukraine. As of March, 20,000 people from 52 different countries volunteered to join the Legion, according to Dmitry Kuleba, the Ukrainian foreign minister. The Foreign Legion is formally a part of Ukrainian territorial defense forces. It unites people from different corners of the world, from countries such as Georgia, where many share the all-too-familiar rage against Russian invasion of the sovereign country, to further countries such as Australia. We are proud to have a message from Damien Magro, the spokesperson of the Foreign Legion of Ukraine, who will tell us more about these people and why they decided to join the fight. Hi, uh, my name is Damien. I'm a spokesperson for the International Legion, and this is Abigail. She's communications director, and we're going to try and answer for a couple of questions, to a couple, a couple of questions. So the first one is, uh, what were the most common reasons for soldiers to decide to go to Ukraine, and what were their motivations? So the most common answers we get when we ask our guys is that they find that this war is not just Ukraine's war, it's a war on democracy, it's an attack on democracy and all the values that the civilized world shares, democracy, freedom, sovereignty, and uh, they felt like they have to protect Ukraine in order to protect the whole of Europe and the whole world. Um, I, I'll add something to this, which is I think a lot of people, especially from Central Europe, they often say that a big motivation for them is not just to defend Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, but it's actually to defend their home country as well. Uh, because they understand very well that if you don't stop the Russians in Ukraine, they will keep on going and possibly, you know, Poland will be next or Lithuania will be next. So for our legionnaires who come from Central European countries, I think that's, uh, that's an important factor as well, right? And we heard that um, Russia wants to reinstate the former Soviet Union and rebuild the Soviet Union. So of course, stopping that from happening and, and sending a message to all countries that are thinking about invading their neighbors is very, very important and showing that the international order an international law has to be respected and you can't just invade a sovereign country because you feel like it. Yeah, and I think, I think that's a motivation for a lot of people. So second question. So we're moving on, uh, and I think you can answer this. Can you tell us more about the process of joining the International Legion for the defense of Ukraine? Sure, so the first thing I think that people that are interested to come and fight should do is they should look at themselves in the mirror and think if they're ready for it, because you're coming to a war, a war zone and it's a very different type of war that we've seen before and even people that have experience uh, have told us how tough it is on the front line and and how much of an artillery war it is it's a it's a different thing than it was in iraq or, or afghanistan if you were in the nato army so i think that's the, the first the very first step is for any applicant anyone who's interested to look at the mirror and think it's through if you are convinced that you want to join the Legion, if you think you can make a difference, and this is the most important, if you have some sort of combat experience from before, if you've, if you've been on combat missions before. Which means uh, having been deployed into a war zone, because many people ask us that I've got military training, I've been serving in an army for X number of years without having been deployed, unfortunately that... No, so we're, we're looking for people who definitely have a concrete combat experience, who've been there either through military or for other reasons have been in, in combat before. 
And if you and if you can fit all of these uh, these criteria, then the first step to take contact with the International Legion is to go on the Ministry of Foreigners, uh, Foreign Affairs website that they created for the Legion, it's called fightforua.com. And you go there and there will be contact details to your closest Ukrainian embassy, depending on the country that you're living in. And you can send your application there and the Ukrainian embassy will consider it, will look at your documents and if you pass that pre-approval stage, they will send you details on how to find us. Uh, you will come to Ukraine, you will find us, we will bring you to one of our recruitment centers and there you will meet our recruiters and you should realize that the final decision always rests with the recruiters. So even if the embassy ahead of time told you you're pre-approved, that is not a guarantee you will get into the Legion, but that should be the first step. And then you get to Ukraine, you talk to our recruiters and hopefully you'll, you'll get in. So, uh, moving on, the third question that we've been asked, uh, what are the requirements to join the International Legion? We've kind of covered this in a way. Uh, and what conditions do the fighters have in war? Maybe you should focus on this. What are the conditions, the fighting conditions so, on the front? We had several people who had extensive combat experience tell us that this is a very brutal war, precisely because it's an artillery war, it's throwing things at each other from a distance, it's not necessarily close urban combat, and even when it comes to that, it's much more intense, it's much more brutal than what people have seen and experienced before. Um, the other thing is, what people often forget is that even though Ukraine is supported by NATO countries and, and supplied by NATO countries, it's not a NATO army, it's not a NATO country, and this country has been at war since 2014. So. The, the supplies or the, the conditions are not what uh, people coming from an American army will be used to. Um, people who come and join the Legion and join the Ukrainian army are entitled to the same pay Ukrainian soldiers get, the same benefits, the same legal protections and the same obligations apply to them. Um, the conditions are what you would expect in a trench war, which we all know that this is turning into. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's the thing. It's like we try to do everything we can so that people have the best conditions possible on the front and when they're fighting. But let's face it, this is a hard war. It's not as easy as well. I I, I haven't been in a lot of wars, so I can't compare. But it's not like you're not there with a NATO army with air backup and um, you know air evacs if you get wounded and the conditions on the front are a lot harsher than I think a lot of the people so, from NATO armies are used to so that is one thing that people should expect that it is an artillery war and a lot of the war is a game of waiting and, and hopefully going forward little and, by little. And what we have to also remember is that Ukraine is fighting a war on Ukrainian soil and territory, so it's not the same as the US fighting a war in Afghanistan where the US is not under attack and the US can keep on supplying their armies far away from the home country. Um, and once again, this war did not start in February this year, it started eight years ago. And, and that means that uh, the country and the army is depleted of supplies and uh, the army is supplying the legion with, uh, with uh, weapons and ammunition and the basic supplies and the legion protective equipment yes well. protective equipment which means plates plate carriers and helmets and other things and the legion is also fundraising to to supply our troops with even more equipment and we're trying well to, we try we, we try, try as much as we can it's very much dependent on donors and private donations so if anyone is listening to this you can move to one of our websites and one of our fundraisers and give some yeah. donation that will go towards buying equipment for our guys on the front there was one more question right yes do you consider the Russian aggression against Ukraine as also a threat to the whole world? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so the issue is that, I think a lot of people understand this, the aggression of, you, of Russia against Ukraine doesn't affect only Ukraine. I mean, obviously, Ukrainian people are the, on, the, on the receiving end of this. But let's ask the question differently. Is it the first time that an imperialist power has uh, invaded their neighbor? Um, it's not. It's something that repeats itself throughout history and it doesn't affect only Ukraine. And my point was gonna be that after the Second World War, 
there was a collective worldwide decision to, for this to never happen again, right? The, the foundation of the United Nations was based on the principle that um, the use of force in international relations should be prohibited. No country should attack their neighbors and no use of force should ever be allowed except in self-defense. Well, this is exactly the type of conflict which in the Charter of the United Nations, of the United Nations was described as self-defense for Ukraine. And the attack is an aggression and the crime of aggression is not a crime just against Ukraine, it's a crime against the whole of humanity. Because if we allow this to happen, then the consequences will be humongous. It might be that China will feel more confident to attack their neighbor. I'm not gonna name it, but I think everyone understands. It might be that some other imperialist countries figure it's okay to go and attack their neighbor. And so the consequences, if Russia is allowed to win this war, will be much larger than just for Ukraine. It will be much more, uh, much more, if it will have much more impact. Than and this. I think we can also add that we already see the global implications of this war, um, where Russia is weaponizing um, the world's dependence on on Ukrainian grain and on on Russian uh, oil and gas, where they try to blackmail the international community, where they try to blame Ukraine for, for the, the famines that are threatening Africa especially. Um, we can see that there is an economic meltdown all across Europe and this all started when Russia fired the first missile on Ukraine's territory. Of course, and it's, it's very much a blame the victim kind of thing where Ukraine is suddenly responsible for hunger in the world. Well, who, how about the country that started the war and blockaded all of Ukraine's harbors and prevented Ukraine from exporting 26 million tons of grain? I think it's even more right? now. We, it, has, it has an effect on a lot of people around the world. And actually there are millions of people who are, who are being hungry in North Africa and the Middle East at the moment because of this conflict. So. I think the answer to this question is very clearly so that this is a war that has consequences and implications way beyond the borders of Ukraine itself. I mean, and so in, it's a worldwide war in this in, war. In the UK, this, they are they are talking about a, a crisis of living costs, and that is all related to the, the rising uh, energy costs, which then have an impact on the cost of everything, from heating your home to buying the basic products that you're used to buying, because. All of these costs um, influence the cost of everything that we know. And I think people need to know that uh, the Russian war is, is hurting them as well in their everyday lives. Right. Thank you, Martin Jay. Thank um, you, Damien. We uh, will be in touch. Um, thank you for your attention. It is always good to hear directly from the people, especially people who were so amazingly brave as to leave their civilian lives behind and to join the fight for justice directly. We offer you to take a look at the fragments of an amazing interview by Hermansky TV with Anastasia Stanko's great reporting to get even a better idea of who the fighters of the Foreign Legion are and why they came to Ukraine. The video was kindly authorized for use by Hromadske TV. Як ви можете оцінити всю цю різношерстну публіку, яка вам тепер підпорядковується, і чи легко ними керувати? Перший час це було надзвичайно складно, оскільки люди з різним бойовим досвідом, з різних країн, різні мови, в кожного різна доктрина, але по факту крок за кроком підгоняли всіх під один стандарт. Підрозділ виконує задачі, це придаються в наші групи, це групи або гранатометників, або операторів джавелінів, або снайпера до, на допомогу до інших підрозділів для виконання бойових завдань на даному напрямку. Ми знаємо, що є в них ця особливість, що вони можуть якби, розірвати контракт в будь-який момент. В будь-який момент. Саме перша група вона відсіялась після ракетного удару по Яворському полігону. Це просто люди не усвідомлювали повністю, що це таке. And maybe took two days across the border. We joined up with the Legion. I got online with the Ukraine embassy. And yeah, it was... There we are. <laughs> <laughs> Why you decided to you know, protect Ukrainian people, protect Ukraine, fight uh, well, on our side? Why? Well, it's a bit unfair, you know, they're bullies. 
I just fell in love with the, the spirit, I guess. They need a hand, so I threw me job in, had a really good job. Um, just jumped on the plane and come. But because of why? That is, I don't know, because civilians are suffering yeah, here in Ukraine? Everybody, yeah, everybody, Because you think that uh, it's not fair that Russian came well, to our land or what? Like they're killing, killing? killing innocent people, you know, um, attacking villages. They're not targeting military operations. They're just attacking villages, as you can see. So we need to eradicate them from this place. Celebrity cat. <laughs> Celebrity cat? Yeah. yeah, it's very naughty. And what about you? You are on the first time in Ukraine? Yes, first time in Europe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you are here because of what? Because also people are suffering or what? Uh, why you decided to it's a very It's a very general term. Um, it's just, it's, it's helping another human, you know, when somebody trips next to you. You put your hand out and you help them up. You don't just keep walking. It's not. Um, if this uh, this happened to Ukraine, yes, it's very unjust and it's very unfair. And um, you guys are fighting for basic civil rights here, basic human rights. I mean, you guys this is unprovoked. It's it's not right. It's uh, you guys are again just fighting for regular human rights, the right to live free, to for liberty, all those things. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about, like, uh, that Russians said that the uh, Ukrainian army is Nazis? Some Nazis, like, fighting here and they are fighting against Nazism in Ukraine? What do you think about this? I think it's, I think it's pure propaganda. It's something for their government to tell their people to justify their actions over here. Why you decided to be here? For my friends who live here. Uh, they are Ukrainians? Yes. And uh, you was uh, a soldier in previous, like, in previous life, I mean, before the Ukrainian war, you no. was... No, I was a mountain guide, and I was a long-range target shooter. Uh-huh. So that's the reason why you're a sniper now. That's right. Okay. When yeah, when the war started, started, I was in the mountains, okay. and I didn't have any cell phone reception. In and Ukraine? Uh, I was in Georgia, in uh, Gruzia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I came down from mountains, and um, I saw the news, and I, like, became very distraught. I felt very bad and I thought for one night what I would do and then I went to the city and tried to get on the soonest flight I could get to come to, to Ukraine after that. Why are you here? Because it's the right thing to do, because uh, if Ukraine falls, Bulgaria is the next target and we are all... Romania and after Bulgaria? Oh, from the sea maybe? From, from the sea, from everywhere. Not. Uh, Maybe not only directly, but uh, we also have a huge problem with the uh, hybrid war, with the uh, political party that is sponsored by Putin, with uh, uh, disinformation, websites publishing fake news, uh, people on the internet uh, trolling and putting smiles uh, under the photos of uh, dead bodies and uh, every, all the weapons possible. You are from Philippines? Yes, American Philippines. So yes. American Philippines. Why you are here? Uh, to support and assist uh, Ukrainians. Um, back home when I was in America, I was former Marine, and um, I saw the news reports. I saw that um, the Russians were doing very bad things, and a lot of innocent people were getting hurt. And I wanted, uh, I prayed for it, and I wanted to do more than just to send donations and then say on the internet, "Oh, God bless them." I hope that dude. I wanted to give my blood, sweat, and tears and contribute to the fight here. You've been watching this special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro Atlantic course, Ukraine in Flames. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In the description to this episode, you can find information on how you personally can help Ukraine in the face of Russian aggression. Remember that everything is going to be Ukraine.